So welcome everybody to our service this morning. It's lovely to have you all here, um, whether you're in the Zoom room here with us or joining us on Facebook. Um, everything that you need should come up on the screen. Um, so just everyone join in together and enjoy this morning. I'm going to share my screen now. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're going, to, um, we're going to sing now. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on mute so I can sing along too. So uh, let's bring ourselves now with all that we are and all that we bring to God uh, to confess our lives, ourselves before him. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, 
we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from all your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He has defeated the powers of death. Hallelujah. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Hallelujah. He has the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jill is going to read our reading for us this morning. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you that, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so now Paul is going to speak to us this morning. Good morning. Yes, thank you. So last weekend, for the first time in a long time, I went to a restaurant to have a meal with the family to celebrate mum and dad's wedding anniversary. In line with current restrictions, we were sat outside and each table was in a sort of covered pod with an electric light and heater. When we arrived, it was bright enough and warm enough that we didn't need them. But as the evening drew on, we started to feel that we would benefit from a little bit of extra heat and light. So we were disappointed to learn that due to problems with the electrics, the light and heater in our pod weren't working. It wasn't actually too cold or dark, but looking around, it appeared that the lights and heaters in all the other pods were working. I couldn't help feel a slight sense of injustice that we seemed to be the only table without heating and light. However, soon one of the waiters arrived to declare that he was going to work some magic and do something, in his words, very important to get our light and heater working. We got the distinct impression from his manner that his confidence in his abilities might be slightly misplaced. But we were entertained by his running commentary as he began unplugging things and plugging them in elsewhere. Eventually, much to our surprise, the light came on and the heater began pumping out heat. The cheers from around our table mixed with the groans from the next pod along, where the light and heater, which had been working up until that point, had gone off. Undeterred by this setback, our resourceful waiter hurried over to the next pod to see if he could work his magic there too. Over the course of the evening, the light and heat in our pod went off and came back on again two or three times. A similar thing happened to other pods around the restaurant garden. Ultimately, I think the electrics weren't designed to cope with so many heaters operating at the same time, and they were being overloaded. I'm not sure that our waiters' interventions had really achieved all that much in the end, as the electrics seemed to cut in and out for the rest of the evening, even when he wasn't doing anything. 
From a selfish point of view, it was easy to focus only on what was happening in our own pod and not to be too concerned about anyone else. But of course, although we were all in separate pods, we were all plugged in to the same circuit. What happened in one pod affected the others. Plugging too much in, not using the power efficiently, restricted the power available to other pods. The excesses of some had a detrimental effect on others. That image of being contained within our own pod, concerned with our own challenges and circumstances, and at best only vaguely aware of others around us, seems to me to sum up what this last year has been like for a lot of us. The coronavirus has affected different people in many different ways. But one way it's affected us all is to physically separate us. It has forced us into pods or bubbles. It's made interactions and connections with others difficult. And inevitably, it has made us more inward looking, focused on the issues that affect us and our bubble. It has made many people feel isolated and it's made it harder to remember that we're all connected. It's been a very challenging year, but as we begin the process of unlocking, taking steps towards life returning to normal, whatever normal means, more challenges lie ahead. There are some for whom the relaxing of restrictions can't come soon enough, whose businesses, finances, mental and physical health have suffered badly as a result of the restrictions on their liberty. For them, the easing of the restrictions is like the opening of the floodgates. There's an urgent need to release that pent up anxiety and frustration and to enjoy whatever freedoms the law allows to their fullest. For others, relaxing of restrictions comes too soon. The moving or removal of the boundaries and restrictions that have protected them and made them feel safe for the last year brings greater anxiety. Where for some, the unlocking gives them a sense of being able to regain control of their lives. For others, it feels more like a loss of control. For me, the passage we heard today speaks very powerfully into this challenging time we find ourselves in. In the midst of all our anxiety and turmoil, it's good to be reminded of the simple command Jesus gives us love one another. It is in fact one of the central messages of the gospel. Love one another. This passage shouldn't really be read on its own. It's a continuation of the passage Jody spoke about last week, where Jesus talks about being the true vine and us being the branches. We can see that at the end of the passage, where Jesus again picks up the theme of his disciples bearing fruit. Now it may surprise you to hear this, but I'm not much of a gardener. I don't have a garden of my own, and I don't have much of an interest in gardening or plants. But I do understand that many plants don't really grow over the winter. They don't blossom or bear fruit because the conditions are not right for them to grow. But as the conditions become warmer and brighter in the spring, they begin to grow and flourish. And with some plants, such as vines, as they begin to grow, a good gardener will prune their branches. Now, on the face of it, that might sound rather cruel and painful, cutting a plant back while it's trying to grow. The trouble is, with plants such as vines, as I understand it, not all growth is necessarily good. Left to themselves, vine branches may produce growth in different directions, some of which may damage or restrict its own growth and development, or the growth and development of other branches. This can prevent the branches from flourishing and producing good fruit. A good gardener will prune the potentially damaging growth and encourage the branches to grow towards the sun, giving them and the branches around them the space to grow and flourish and produce good fruit. The important thing to remember is that in order to flourish and produce good fruit, the branch must stay connected to the vine. And by being connected to the vine, the branches are connected to each other. We are the branches. We're all connected to the same vine. The flourishing and good growth of other branches should be as important to us as our own. The commandments Jesus gives us in this passage, to remain in his love, just as he remains in the Father's love, and to love one another as he has loved us, remind me of the great commandments he gives elsewhere in the Gospels. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. The second commandment is like the first because 
if we love God, if we remain in God and God in us, then it follows that we will, we must love one another the way God loves us. And let's not miss that point either. God loves us. God loves you. Greater love has no one than this, Jesus said, to lay one down one's life for one's friends. And that's what Jesus did for us, for you. That's how much God loves you. The point of this verse, incidentally, is not that we should all be willing to sacrifice our lives in pursuit of a cause. It's to show us the depth of God's love for us and to show us how deeply we should aspire to love God and love each other. That means not just being concerned with our own growth and well-being, but with the growth and well-being of others. It is to consider and encourage the flourishing of other branches and not just our own. Winter is over. That period of cold and darkness, of shutting down to preserve ourselves has passed. Spring has arrived. Light has dawned and the sun begins to shine on our faces. It's a time of growth. We will all grow differently and at different rates. But it's important to remember that we're all attached to the same vine. We need to allow the gardener's hand to tend and guide us. We may need to be pruned to have some of our growth cut back to allow ourselves and others the space to flourish and produce good fruit. But we can't go it alone. We need to remain in the vine. As we emerge from the darkness and step out into the light, love God, love yourselves and love one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Um, let's just take a moment of quiet now as we allow some of what Paul has been sharing with us uh, to, to filter through. loving God help us to be those who are although aware of our own circumstances uh, that we know we are connected with one another through you help us to be those who um, are concerned for the flourishing and well-being of others as well as knowing uh, that you love us and desire to bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to sing.
And so let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so Jill is going to lead us in our prayers now. Heavenly Father, you promised through your son Jesus to hear us when we pray to you in faith. We thank you for your church across the world and for the freedom we have to worship you, remembering those who live in countries where they are persecuted for their faith. We pray for Archbishop Justin and Bishop Sarah and here at St. Michael's for Jodie and for all the team who have enabled us to continue worshiping together throughout the pandemic. We look forward to the time when we can all meet again in the church building and ask for your guidance as we adapt and plan for the months ahead. In our own lives, in all that we do, help us to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you our troubled world we pray for all those caught up in situations of tension and conflict and for the country so badly affected by the coronavirus, especially for the situation in India at this time. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for our government and for those in positions of authority across the world. Guide our leaders in the ways of justice and of peace. Open their hearts to the needs of the vulnerable and help them to lead with compassion and in pursuit of a fairer society. In our own lives, in all that we do, help us to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our local community, for all key workers and volunteers, for teachers, health professionals and the police, for those who risk their own safety in order to help others. We thank you for our homes and for the love of family and friends. We thank you for the fellowship we find within our church family at St. Michael's. In our lives, in all that we do, help us to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to mind those we know personally who are ill or suffering and those on our church prayer list. We thank you for the ministry of prayer in our church and for the comfort this brings to so many. We thank you for the vaccine rollout, for the scientists, the vaccinators and volunteers and for the hope that the vaccine is bringing to the world. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of a loved one for those who face the future with fear or apprehension, for those fit in body, but with inner pain or anxieties. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so if um, Catherine, please, would you lead us as we gather our prayers together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so now um, I invite everyone, uh, we're going to go to gallery view as we share peace with one another and with those who join us uh, online on Facebook. Um, so if you would like to, you can actually unmute yourselves. I don't think we did that before, but let's do that this time. It may be a cacophony, that's big. Okay. So, alleluia, Christ has been raised from the dead. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you, everybody. We can wait to each other now. <laughs> peace be with you all and to those joining on. Wonderful. Um, if you could put yourselves back on mute, that'd be really helpful. So God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your spirit to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. So uh, it'd be lovely to see you um, between 11 and 12, if you would like to join us on Zoom for a coffee together. Um, otherwise, we will see you hopefully next week when we will be in the church building, but we'll be live streaming at 10 o'clock as usual. So do join in our final hymn.